introduce all of you to our incredible speaker, Batiri, today. He was born in Puebla, Mexico, and is a local artist here in Houston. He's internationally recognized primarily by a series of paintings depicting bodiless sports figures in motion. His work ranges from figurative to conceptual expression, always the essence of an idea or a subject. He is the official artist of the Houston Lamborghini Festival since 2014. And some of his, client, his clients include Reebok Brazil, MLS, NFL, and Lone Star Sports and Entertainment. So please help me welcome Mr. Batiri. Lawrence, you are Hello. Set. Hello, everyone. Can everybody hear me? Yes. OK. All right. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, today. Uh, very excited about this uh, presentation of mine. So basically, what I'm gonna do uh, today it is uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of uh, storytelling about my uh, how I actually I overcame uh, my asthma through uh, my art, and uh, I'll tell you step by step uh, this uh, presentation that I put together, especially for today. Um, so okay, let's start. Uh, I have this presentation, PowerPoint presentation, we're gonna see in the screen. So, okay, so um, I have a, right now, I have doing this professionally for eight years and I've done, uh, I basically, I uh, built a brand which is uh, related into with sports and art. Um, so, okay, I am from, uh, from Puebla, from Mexico City, uh, from uh, a city in Puebla, which is close to Mexico. Um, it is located in the central east of, of Mexico. And um, this city, it is very well known for three different things. One is um, the historic uh, culinary, which the food is amazing there. Um, you, here in Houston, we have actually a few restaurants. Hugo's, he's from Puebla, so he has really good cuisine. I don't know if you have tried, but uh, the mole poblano or chile senogada, that's from Puebla. Also, uh, the um, um, colonial architecture, Puebla is very well known because of that. Uh, there's a lot of French and Spanish architecture. Um, so it is uh, the, the old part of Puebla, it is full of this colonial architecture, which is beautiful. Uh, also, Puebla is known for the pottery. Um, it is called Talavera, and um, it has an influence from um, from uh, the Iranian um, immigrants in Puebla, actually. Then um, also, I think you may know uh, Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo, it's a battle that was fought actually in Puebla against the French. So that's a battle that we won, and now it has been more commercialized, but that's where it was fought in Puebla, where I'm from. Okay, we're gonna go to the next slide. And, um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself. So, um, I actually um, started drawing or sketching when I was three years old in 1985. That's what my mom tells me that uh, she will leave me. I, I was a very timid, introverted kid, so she would leave me with my color pencils and, and sketchbook, and I was just drawing. And I don't remember that until later. But then uh, we're gonna see uh, on the next slide that um, uh, I was always watching soccer since I was um, six years old. I remember always watching it is uh, soccer in Mexico, like in many other countries, it is a big sport or part of, a, of a, our lives or heritage. Uh, you grow watching, playing, talking about soccer teams. So uh, I remember that watching, um, watching uh oh sorry so Brenda says cannot see the slide um so uh this is a slide where um I, I'm I remember watching soccer and then um let's sorry let me see okay then um around when I was seven years old I remember suffering from asthma and my mom tells me that I actually was diagnosed with asthma since I was about two three years old really really uh little but uh, I remember because I was, when I was playing soccer with my friends, I remember having that kind of a difficulty breathing. Um, so uh, at around seven years old, I remember having uh, the asthma, which was affecting me. Um, 
so in the next slide, we're going to see that um, this is an old photo from uh, Puebla where uh, my parents, uh, uh, well, they put me in this school in, in where it was uh, the Puebla team. Um, we were, I was in the youth um, team and I was about, I think, eight years old. So uh, this one, a very special photo because I, I mean, I have the, the uniform. I felt like I was about to become a, a professional soccer player. Um, and we got to play one day at the stadium with, with all, the, all the public around it at the halftime of one of, uh, uh, of the games in Puebla. So um, the next slide, I, um, uh, I, I, you, you're gonna see only myself there uh, because that's when um, I remember just playing soccer more in a, not just recreational, but I was taking it very seriously. But at the same time, yeah, I, I couldn't take it very, I mean, my, my asthma didn't allow me to, to keep uh, playing further. So um, in the next slide, you will, you're gonna see my, my first painting where um, I, was, I was always painting and drawing when, um, I, I think in my, just, just for, hot, for, for fun. So this is my painting at 10 years old. Uh, I completed this oil painting of a naked or nude baby reaching a piano. And um, I remember I felt I was a little bit older than that, but I signed it and dated it. And it was 1992. So I was 10 years old or about to turn 10 years old. Um, at the same time, you're gonna see in the next slide that um, my asthma was, um, it, it was, really affecting me to keep playing soccer uh, so i remember when i was a kid i always wanted like when you when people ask kids what do you want to be when you grow up and i remember just having in mind being a soccer player it was everything for me soccer um watching like i said before watching the games going to games playing but then the asthma really um, that's what caused me to really decide to stop playing in and I mean even if I wanted to I, I couldn't because I ended up in the hospital um, my mom uh, I remember she would take me to the hospital and they would put me ox oxygen uh, it was really bad uh, my my lips my 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 uh, nails were becoming like purple because I, I was uh, out of breath so um, I I couldn't keep playing and I was a little kid so then by 1997, um, uh, we immigrated to the to United States. Um, you're gonna see in this slide. Uh, um, uh, so from Puebla, we, uh, we went straight to Houston actually. So I've been in Houston since then, since 1997. It's, it has been almost 24 years. And um, you're, uh, you're gonna see in the next slide that uh, I remember a few challenges and uh, I had to adapt to, to the new place because as a kid, I didn't know, I wasn't expecting to be living in another place, another country. Um, so especially, I mean, Puebla it is a city where you have a very nice weather, very like 70s, um, kind of a San Francisco weather. Coming to Houston, it was extreme hot and humid. Uh, I remember with my athlete, it was a little bit hard for me to be living here. But I was adapting to that and then learning English. For me, um, because I was a person where, uh, when I, I didn't really talk too much, I didn't express myself too much. So it was hard to, to learn another, another language. Um, so I was adapting to English. And then also I remember adapting to the, to the urbanism and infrastructure of, of Houston or, or a city in the United States where everything, at least here, you have to drive everywhere. I remember in Puebla, I was able to walk to the park or everywhere around the corner, everything was closer. So I was adapting to all that. But, uh, and also I was missing at the same time, of course, uh, playing soccer in my country. Uh, here, uh, I think it is a sport. It, it is another sport. It is not a, not a major sport, I think. So uh, I remember just, uh, I would go to the TV. I couldn't watch soccer like I wanted, or I couldn't play with, just friends because not everyone plays soccer so that I miss a lot I miss of course the food in, from Puebla uh, and I miss my family and friends um, then um, 
in 19, uh, sorry, in the next slide, I'm going to show um, that I studied architecture. I got a bachelor's in architecture from 2002 to 2007. I studied at the University, University of Houston. And um, that was, for me, a very, very nice experience. Uh, I remember I didn't know what to, to choose as a career when I was younger, since I, I couldn't be a, a soccer player. Then I was thinking, okay, what should I study? So um, actually, my stepdad, um, he, he gave me a really good advice. And he told me, well, you, it seems like you, you like art. You're very creative. And you like architecture. So why don't you do architecture? And architecture is more like the master of the creative um, careers so if you study that maybe you can eventually if you don't like that you can do pursue another uh, creative career but uh, our architecture it, it is a career that really um, I think gave me that vision of uh, of what I'm doing now so um, and also the structure and I've learned so many things in architecture which I really enjoyed but I graduated in 2007 from University of Houston and then on the next side, I put a, I got a bachelor's in arts in um, in fine art, in painting. Um, I was working as an architect um, part time because uh, 2008, around yeah 2007, when I just graduated, uh, the recession was going on. Uh, then 2008 was really hard time, so uh, I decided to go back and, and do another uh, career, um, and I chose um, painting. Um, and in there in in, in this career, that's where I remember uh, the, the professor. They didn't really tell told us. They didn't tell us what to paint. They gave us so much liberty, liberty and freedom about whatever we, we wanted to paint. So uh, I thought, well, I'm gonna combine my two passions. So in the next slide, I'll, I see um, uh, I, I say that I combine uh, soccer and art. So that's when it really happened, uh, and I combined it in a different way. Um, when I was a little kid, I'm, I, I have sketches that I was always drawing soccer balls and and different uh, players, soccer players, and and the emblems of different uniforms and teams. Uh, but um, in this, in, in 2008, uh, in, in my career, I wanted to really do something different. Um, so that's when I decided, okay, I'm going to combine my two passions and do something different. So on the next slide, you will see something that it was, um, now I see it's like, wow, that was a, a dream. Um, and that was, it was a hobby. So that's where I created, when, when I created this bodiless uh, sport figures in motion. So that concept really um, uh, took off uh, because I think um now that I look back, I think it was different. Um, it was the first time um, having bodiless sports, I mean, bodiless figures in sports, and then in motion. So um, this concept worked because on, on the next slide, you will see that I'm describing this concept with, that is timeless. Timeless because um, you really focus on the essence rather than, um, you, you, I focus on the essence of the sport rather than an athlete. So it's soccer, you have so many good athletes throughout the, time, throughout the history of, of soccer, which is over 100 years. So every five, 10 years, we, we like to focus on different players, like now Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, before it was Maradona, Pelé. So I thought, okay, I think this concept, which is um, uh, something that is gonna transcend over time, it, that, that can work and I, can, I, I was able to, to to really work with um, composition, the colors of the uniform, complement the color of the background with the colors of the uniform. Um, uh, over the time, I started to um, try to um, uh, kind of uh, get better at what I was painting. So every element and everything that I was painting, I was paint I was putting a lot, a lot of attention. So now every every of these paintings, they have a different ball that gives reference to different countries or to the country of the team that is in, in the painting. Um, it, it gives refer reference to maybe um, uh, the, the year that this rivalry or, or these two teams started playing. So the painting, they, they become more of a, a story about uh, the rivalry of the, of the teams playing there or, or, the, or, or about the essence of, of that team. 
Then, uh, so that was 2008 when I created this. And in 2010, as you're gonna see in, in the next slide, um, I started selling my paintings thanks to the internet, uh, thanks to the technology. Um, and I was just uh, painting, and also I was uh, uploading my, my, my work on my website as a portfolio. And then around that time, that's when social media started. So I was just, uploading my my work um and then i never really thought that that that, that would become um, a vehicle to for people to find my work and 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 get interested in, into that so i started selling my paintings in 2008 uh, i mean 2010 um just it was just a hobby i didn't know that i i, I could do that as a business so um in in 2011 in december in the next slide you're gonna see uh, my biggest project that uh, that really motivated me to keep doing this professionally. Um, so uh, in December 2011, an agency from uh, Brazil, from Porto Alegre, Brazil, they reached out to me and they found me on Facebook. They found my work on Facebook. So they they wanted me to paint five uh, to do five paintings in my style for this team that they were representing, which is the uh, Porto Alegre, Inter de Porto Alegre in Brazil. And uh, they wanted me to to do these five paintings where they, without where I would um, just uh, show their their jersey, their colors to commemorate the five victories that they had won that year, the Inter, and, and that was commissioned by uh, by Reebok Brazil. So that's when I was thinking, wow, I think this has potential, um, and. I, that really gave me the confidence to keep doing this uh, uh, in, a, in a different way, which was more professional. Uh, so uh, that was 2011, December, and I didn't th think too much. So by January 2012, the next slide, that's when I decided, okay, I'm going to do this professionally. I went and registered uh, Betiri, my name, as a DBA, uh, and I started just... Um, putting more time effort uh, into this career. And I was just doing what uh, I was kind of doing before, which was just painting and trying to upload my paintings on, on social media, my, my website, and hopefully trying to sell more paintings. Um, so I didn't know in, in, in the next slide, you're gonna see um, my next uh, struggles or challenges back then, I didn't know uh, that I didn't know, I didn't have any um, business experience at all. Um, I didn't have, I mean, I, I had a uh, substantial financial debt with the student loans, credit cards, and um, I was really bad at just administrating my, my financials. So that I was actually negative. I didn't have any investors, uh, but I was doing this professionally. I was, uh, I remember I moved out from my parents' house, uh, and I was living in a really small studio, and I was working and living there. And I thought, okay, if I um, sacrifice some things, like I'm not, I'm not gonna. My friends started to actually start buying houses, cars, and uh, getting married. And and I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna do this, and I don't know how how long it's gonna take me, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. And I started to get anxiety because of so many things that I was thinking of. Um, so all these challenges were for me uh, really something that uh, now I see, I, I look back and, and, and I, I think I've learned so much from, from all that. So um, in the next slide, you're going to see that um, all these challenges I over, over, overcame uh, because I think um, I really had the passion uh, for, for what I was doing. Um, I had the willpower because I, I remember that I was always thinking, okay, I think I'm, I'm gonna be able to, to be successful and to be doing this. I just believed it somehow that I had that in me. Um, it, was, it was hard, like I said, it was so hard sacrificing things. And uh, at the end of the day, it was just comparing myself with other people, but uh, I knew that uh, eventually it was gonna be worth it. So, um, so um, yeah, I'm gonna, um, and the next slide, I'm gonna describe what really also um, helped me to um, to to put this into action, which was uh, I knew that I had a vision. Um, I knew that I had a, a good uh, 
background in terms of uh, uh, my, I, I think the, the, the concept that I was doing. Um, then I started to put myself goals in 2013. I said, okay, I'm gonna put myself goals and, and see how I can grow and make this better. So I started to, uh, to say, to think, okay, I paint soccer, um, what should I do? One of the goals was to exhibit my paintings in every World Cup, which uh, the World Cup are the most amazing events that happens worldwide. It's like the Olympics, but just focus on one sport. And you have, you see people, uh, I, had a, I had gone to my first World Cup in Germany in 2006, just as a fan, a spectator. And I saw everyone coming together around the world just to watch one sport and it, everybody was cheering, happy, uh, just because of this sport. And it is a game with rivalry, but then the, the game, ended and, and then you I mean everybody's back to being friends um, so for me that was amazing and I was thinking okay I think I need to bring my paintings to every World Cup and exhibit them and share it with all the soccer fans um, and then I started to have strategies and consistency on everything that I was doing so basically these are I think values and factors that um, every business has and, and, and that's what really, I think, requires to just uh, to stay or, or to be successful. Um, in the next slide, you're going to see um, a few of the images of um, my exhibitions that, that, that I started to, to have um, since 2013. I was um, exhibiting already in New York. Then I was able to go to uh, Brazil for the World Cup in Rio de Janeiro. That was one of the most... Uh, or the best, one of the best experiences in my life. Um, then uh, I was able to go and exhibit in, in Italy, in Milan. Uh, I actually, I grew up with all these Renaissance Italian artists. Uh, so for me, going back to Italy, um, uh, it, was, it was just amazing exhibiting there. Also, I got the, the opportunity to exhibit my paintings at the Women's World Cup in Canada in 2015, same year. Then in Mexico, in Puebla, I had my first exhibit in my hometown. And then uh, two years ago, I was in, in Moscow exhibiting my paintings at that World Cup. Um, then uh, things kept uh, coming, um, and good things and bad things. Uh, I, I, I like to, uh, to focus on the, on the good things, but I think um, the things or challenges that are sometimes uh, that happen to us, I think we have to also talk about them um, because that happens to everyone. Uh, but uh, on the next slide, you're gonna see uh, a few of the uh, positive things. I start to get recognition on uh, magazines, publications, newspapers, and TV interviews. Uh, for me, all these in the TV interviews really uh, helped me to to prepare myself as an artist in a, in a in a more complete uh, way because um, that really helped me to not to be a little more extroverted, extroverted and, and to be uh, talking more about what I do. So um, uh, that was, the, all these uh, interviews not only um, gave me exposure, but that also they helped me to, to become a better person and an artist. Then on the next slide, you're gonna see um, a few of the athletes that I've had the pleasure to meet, uh, professional athletes. So I've met um, 2015, uh, for the Women's World Cup, I met uh, Carly Lloyd. She's a local uh, soccer player. Um, I've met um, uh, one of my, uh, uh, this soccer player that I admire in Mexico, and now he lives in Houston. So uh, he actually came to, to my studio one day, uh, Ramon Ramirez. Um, I got to meet him. And last year, uh, I did uh, this amazing project for uh, uh, on, on baseball where I painted um, some of the Astros players, so I get to meet both players, uh, Julie Gurriel and Jose Altuve. Um, so um, that, that, th those were amazing moments for me. Um, and then on the next slide, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna see a few graphics of um, some of the bad things or challenges that I was talking about. And I remember in 2015, it was a, it was a really intense year for me. Um, and I think sometimes when we, because I, I think I've done a lot, a lot of things 
by instinct, just trusting my God. So um, I was in 2015, 14, 15, I was, when I started doing this, I, I was sleeping bad. I was trying to do too much. I was trying to do architecture projects, graphics, um, painting, networking. Uh, at the same time, try to socialize with friends, uh, family. Um, and so I was sleeping really bad. I didn't have, I, I thought because I was sleeping maybe four, uh, five hours per day, that was going to be okay. And that I was young and I was going to be able to, to do more. Um, and I was eating really poorly. Um, I was eating whatever. I, ne I didn't have a, a diet with diet. And then um, eventually I got a lot of stress. So all this combination led me to, uh, to, uh, to an ulcer that I had in 2015. I remember I, I was about to go to, uh, to Italy to exhibit my, my paintings. And I almost had to cancel that because um, uh, it was really bad. My, my, my stomach was hurting a lot. Um, it was really bad. So I had to really start to take care of myself. And I learned that, that since then and now it has been much better. Um, on the next slide, you're gonna see that um, this bodyless style um, extended or expanded into, expanded into other sports. Um, now, uh, because I think uh, also the nature of me living in, in the United States um, and having all these different sports, which are like major sports like baseball, football, or basketball, um, people start to ask me, hey, do you have this team? Do you have this, this, this sport? So I started to, uh, to do more sports. Uh, I started to get commissions for Taekwondo, for football, for baseball, uh, polo. Um, there's so many sports, so um, I think that's a really cool um, thing that, that now people want that uh, as a way of um, uh, kind of a, have a, this signature style, but with their own uh, team or sport. Um, in the next slide, you're going to see, um, this is one of my, I think, my biggest achievements that I've had. Um, uh, I, I, I brought my paintings to, to Moscow in 2018 so the idea was to leave all these 15 paintings in or 12 paintings in um in in, in moscow for the world cup for two weeks but the exhibition actually extended for almost two months so i had to leave my paintings in moscow and i came back um but then um right before it finished the, the exhibition in moscow uh, another um uh, people from russia they contacted me and they they asked me hey um we saw your work and we are interested in having uh, your paintings for a world tour. Uh, this is a project that um, they were uh, rec um, uh, finding, trying to find artists that painted soccer and they, they, were, they, want, they want to have this collective exhibition to bring them from Moscow and have them all in East Asia. So the paintings now are touring they started in, in, in Mos Moscow, uh, St. Petersburg, different cities uh, in Russia, and uh, now they're in Kazakhstan, but they're gonna go to India, uh, Germany, China, Turkey, uh, and they're gonna end up in actually in, in Qatar for the World Cup in 2022. Um, so for me as, um, as an artist and, and, and for my curriculum portfolio, this is amazing. Um, the paintings have been in, actually in different museums in all these different cities and countries. So it is surreal, um, but so, uh, um, at this time, a uh, big accomplishment that I want to share. So the next slide, um, in the next few slides, you're gonna see uh, also um, my work in a different scale. So um, in 2013, no, actually 2012, I created my first mural that was in Mexico City. Um, they, this agency, again, in Mexico, they found me online. I uh, had my paint, painting cells also in this um, photo uh, website called Flickr. So they found me there and they wanted a, this company or, yeah, they, they do all the, uh, the publicity for, for all the stadiums in, in, in Mexico City, in Mexico, all, all over Mexico. So they were building their new office and they wanted uh, something they have they want some soccer art in their lobby so they commissioned me to do a mural with my style in their reception so that was my first mural in Mexico City and from there uh, I started to do more murals so the next slide 
slides, you're going to see a couple of my murals in Houston. This is one that has become very iconic. Uh, this is called Four Legends, and this is um, a client that he wanted, he wanted the faces, which I didn't want to portray the faces. Uh, but he told me, no, I want to, to depict 10, uh, the 10, number 10 legends from these different countries. So he wanted specifically Maradona from Argentina, uh, Carlos Valderrama from Colombia, Zinedine Zidane from France, and Pele from Brazil. So what I did, uh, I proposed to him to paint the, the jersey in, a, in, in color and detail, and, and the face in a very more like sketch or stamp like um, just in black and white. Um, then um, this, so this mural started to, to get, uh, it started to get iconic because this, this is located in, uh, in a very nice location in, in close to the Heights on Taylor, in Taylor Street. It is on 2200 Summer Street. And, and actually, uh, the business is uh, people go there and play soccer, kids and adults. So a lot of people now, they go, take photos. This week, actually, just found out that the mural was part of a, of a music or rap music uh, video, which uh, <laughs> this is uh, an, an interesting uh, rapper that he went in and filmed the video there. So uh, it has become very iconic, this, this mural. Um, then in the next one, you're gonna see another one that I did for, for uh, former player, Dyn from the Dynamo player, uh, Brian Ching. He opened his uh, bar in East Downtown. So he commissioned me to do a, a mural for him uh, at his bar. And I, I uh, proposed to do that, which is uh, uh, his bicycle goal he scored once with the Dynamo, uh, but uh, with my with my own style, which is bottomless. So um, uh, the only thing is that uh, you can recognize there is, a, is his number, which he wore uh, 20, 25 on his back. But it could be, like I said, uh, for me, doing bodyless, it, it can be anyone. It can be any player. I think uh, soccer, uh, it is a sport about a team. So even though we focus on different athletes, I think um, it is important to, to know that uh, it is uh, 11 players against 11 players. So when you win, the whole team wins. Um, so that's, that's my purpose of removing the flesh, the body, and the face. Um, and it actually sh sh uh, switches or, or uh, shifts the, the, the focus of the identity to not the flesh or, or, or the person, but the colors and, 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 the, and the team or uniform of the team. Then on my next slides, you're gonna see um, what I've been doing lately or since maybe uh, five years ago, I started to, to get invited into different uh, schools, uh, libraries, um, and around the community to talk about what I was doing, what I've been doing. So um, I've been doing a lot of career uh, days in, in elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, uh, the public library, and just come with a few of my paintings and I pretty much talk about what I've been doing and try to inspire um, younger kids. I think this career is very important to have that, that to send that message that it is possible to do art. Um, it, is, it, is, it is hard. Um, but I, I tell everyone what it, it takes as far, I mean, with my short experience as an artist, I tell them what, what, I, what I can do uh, or what, what they can do and, and they, can, they can have some guidance. Um, on the next slide, you're going to see um, another a photo of, of this elementary school that I came and I gave them a, a sketch um, with uh, just the body list and they drew faces and different colors on, on the on the. On the, on the sketches so that those have been very uh, interesting very rewarding and full, um, uh, it really fulfills me these uh, experiences because I think uh, me learning or getting inspired from from past artists and now being able to do that with younger gener generations uh, I think that's that's the, that's the best that I uh, that's the most rewarding that I can that, that I can get so uh, that's uh, that's what I've been, been doing with the community. And the next slide, you're gonna see one of my biggest projects that I've been working on for 
for a few years. Um, this is a park that I proposed to the city of Houston. It, is, it was an initiative that I proposed back in 2015. Um, it was an idea to enhance the endpoint of a bike trail in, in, in East Downtown and, and kind of combine different activities there. The, the location, it is, it is actually next to the, to the Dynamo Stadium where, where the soccer team plays. So the, the area, since it is a bike trail, it is the end point and there is really nothing but just a trail. Um, so I was thinking, what if we propose, if we have more like a sitting area for people to tailgate before every game, if we have food trucks around there so people can have, enjoy some food um, before games or after games or for some events, um, have your, uh, a bike station to rent your bike and, and go, that bike trail goes four miles to the medical center. Um, uh, also uh, different uh, CrossFit stations uh, because there is a lot of CrossFit uh, or it's a big CrossFit community in that area and small soccer fields where um, kids can play in there also. Uh, and then also have all this public art uh, um, all around it. So those are all the different activities that I proposed to, this, to the city of Houston to make this a park. I call it Gold Park. And that comes from when you uh, score uh, a goal in sports or when you have a goal in life. Um, so that's where the, the name comes from. Um, that, uh, that project um, was approved last 2018, November. It was finally approved by the Parks Department. Um, so it is now um, a reality where we're working on it. We just submitted um, all the documents to make it to make a nonprofit and start raising funds um, and start doing events and just to execute the project. So um, that's my biggest project that I've been working on, combined my architecture background, art and, and soccer. And, and then um, on the next slide, you're gonna see only my, um, my social media handle. I try to stay pretty active. Um, uh, like I said before, social media was or it has been my tool uh, for me to, to really be in communication with people. That's how I get most of my projects from. Um, that's how I announce my events, everything. Uh, so I try to stay pretty active. And um, so that's, that's all uh, as for me, for my presentation. So thank you so much. I hope everyone enjoyed it and hopefully I got to inspire a little bit, uh, some of you. So um, uh, I have more work, which uh, like the Lamborghini thing and other subjects. Uh, I, I want to focus on, on the sports and soccer today. So uh, uh, like, uh, you can see in my social media all, all the rest of the, the work that I have. But um, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for the opportunity. And thank you so much to everyone that uh, was able to, to see the presentation. Well, we are honored to have you. Thank you for all of the beautiful things you are doing. Um, does anybody have any questions? If you want to put it in the chat, I can ask them to Batiri. Um, Batiri, I don't know if you can see the chat, but we've already got some comments. Krista says your work is so beautiful and so moving, really inspiring across the board, um, a range of physical spaces and people. Thank you for sharing your gifts and blessing the world. Keep going strong. Your impact is even larger than you know. Um, Thank you. Uh, yes, do you have a studio, Batiri? Yeah, actually, um, I just moved to this uh, studio in the Heights. Um, we're going to do a, um, a mini sports art um, pop up on Sunday for Father's Day. So everyone that is in Houston and they want some gifts for, for their parents. And if they like sports, they can come on Sunday from 5 to 8. Uh, my studio is in 10. It's at 1024 Studiwood in the Heights. It, um, I'm gonna have a few of the prints uh, um, displaying at the deck. So uh, we're gonna be here, but also I'm in the process of building my own studio and gallery in, um, in, uh, in East Downtown. So hopefully in, in a few months, I'll be back there. Very good. Um, Dawn asks, the very first painting uh, you created with the baby, where did you get the idea for it? That was, uh, I remember it was um, from a magazine that my parents, they told me uh, 
they asked me if I could paint that. So I, I think it was like an ad of a of a of a magazine, if I remember. Uh, but it's um, a little bit iconic now that I look back because I painted a naked baby with all the flesh, and now my work is not recognized for the flesh. <laughs> oh yeah, that that is neat. Um. Uh, Peyton asks, what do you do with the Lamborghini Festival? It's held at City Center, which is close to where she lives. Yeah, so uh, since 2014, I was selected uh, as the um, artist of the festival. And I do a painting for every year, a unique painting. And we auction the painting off uh, throughout the festival, the three-day festival. People uh, bid on it and um, I donate 50% um, uh, of the proceeds for uh, a cause, which most of the times or every year in the Lamborghini Festival is to help kids with cancer. That's awesome. We've got a lot of um, compliments here to you. Let's see, um, the next question. Serena wants to know if you can talk about some of the collaborations you've done with others in the community, uh, like the event you held at the Dynamo Stadium that she attended. Yeah, thank you, Serena. So um, I've been fortunate to do a few or a lot of collaborations with the community. Uh, I think just by the nature of me painting sports and the sports, it is about the community. So uh, that, that uh, like for example, that event that you went, that was um, kind of a collaboration with different community partners that we put together to, um, to promote the World Cup, the 2018 World Cup. I was about to exhibit my paintings there. So I brought my work that I was gonna bring to Russia. Uh, we had a fashion designer bringing her, her clothing line all about, uh, which is inspired in soccer. Um, we had um, some of the local TV um, channels and just different community partners. So um, we try, I try to, to do this because I think that's how we grow as, I mean, if we all, come together that's how we grow uh, as a city so um it is pretty cool pretty rewarding to, to do to, to do these events with the community yeah that's incredible um andy asks of the world cups you've attended and displayed your work both men and women's uh what was your favorite place to visit and why wow uh that's a hard question because um every every world cup is different and every place is different and unique uh, I, I will say the most special for me was Brazil because that was my first um, World Cup co um, going as an, as, a, as an artist and exhibiting there. And um, so I think, and also just the vibe and, and the lifestyle of, in, of, Brazil, of Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, it was just amazing. Uh, but like uh, Vancouver in Canada, that was amazing as well. I, I was able to go to the, actually to the game of the final. Um, and, and I had I was exhibiting my paintings at uh, the Stadium Museum, so that was another amazing experience. And two years ago in Russia, also just completely different country, but uh, amazing country. Um, so all, all of them have been very very special. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. Um, John asks if you can share more information about your goal park uh, down in Houston and just the details on the timeline and all that kind of stuff that you're doing over there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so like I said, uh, it was approved um, in 2018 as, a, as an official park by the Parks Board and, and the Houston Recreational Parks um, Department. Uh, and so since then, uh, they there's there are so much so many parks in Houston that are kind of a, in the works. So since I proposed that to the city of Houston, they gave me a uh, leadership to to actually kind of a, take the lead uh, for the project. So what we, what I've been doing is um, I'm putting together uh, a board uh, and a committee um, to help me uh, execute the project. So right now, since we had already submitted the, the, the documents to make a nonprofit. We're waiting on that. And we are also um, in the process of meeting different uh, um, landscape architects uh, to see who, who we can work with, uh, just in, in terms to have a, an official set of plans to, to build. Um, I propose the design, but um, it, it has to be 
a little bit more of um, have the construction set of plans for the city and and hopefully by next summer we're gonna start uh, doing events and, and do the fundraising so there there are a few things that we're working on the calendar uh, the the committee and everything but uh if you wanna you can you can send me an email or or um or i can send you an email with more details and you can you can there i created a social media on on, on about the, the park which is uh, on facebook if you just google gold park you can find it or uh, you can find it as uh, gold park htx Awesome, thank you. And one more question. Um, uh, somebody's asking, what are your goals or what are you trying to accomplish with the art that you are doing? Um, for me, uh, I believe that uh, art it is a, a way of, of expression. Um, and it, it has been a learning process, uh, all this. And what I'm trying to accomplish is it just inspire other people. Because I, I remember, uh, having a lot of uh, comments in my life saying, okay, um, start with artists or you cannot live out of a, uh, this profession. And uh, there are so many stereotypes. So kind of one of my, uh, my goals is to break that stereotype and really inspire other people and, and guide them to, to make, to, if they are willing to do this for the rest of their life, to, to, to inspire them to do it because I, it is possible in especially nowadays i think now that we are very connected and we have all these free platforms i think it is possible uh there is a lot of competition too but i think it is possible so that's mainly my my some of my goals awesome well you are doing a tremendous job inspiring people and thank you so much for sharing your story and your work with us today it was beautiful we are so so grateful for you um everybody please feel free to um stay connected with batiri on social media and follow him and see what he is doing um and this will all get recorded and i'll also save the chat so if anybody has any questions or needs um to contact anybody please let me know but batiri thank you so so much um we are so so grateful for you um next month is inspired leaders on july 10th uh, from 11 30 to 1230 one-ish uh, depending on if we are in person we will keep you posted on that um, but please uh, just be on the lookout for all of those announcements and thank you guys all so much for joining us today i'm so grateful for all of you and i hope you have a beautiful weekend